Shalom. Brock, thank you, Hava. Brock, thank you, Hava Shai. Brock, thank you, Hava. Brock, thank you, Hava Shai. Call the light lock, Yahweh. The Hashem, Yahweh Shai. The Hashem, Rekha Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson Measuring the times, measuring the times. <laughs> so there's so much going on, I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to go through the spirit this evening. I was talking to my first cousin this evening and I was going into the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28, on how we are the people of the book. We fit the curses. Therefore, we are entitled to the promises. The promises that are close, that are near. <clears throat> That's why everything in the earth is ramping up. So the more the birth pains increase, the more the tribulations increase or the turmoil in the earth contractions, then that is a sign to get excited. So the more friction grows and contention, then we are close. How many of you like football? I do. I love football. So one of the analogies that I use is the middle linebacker. He sits behind the defensive line. And one of the best things you can have is an experienced linebacker. He does not bite on the play fake when it looks like the quarterback is going to hand the ball off and run the football through the middle. The quarterback will sometimes fake the handoff. So what do you get with an experienced middle linebacker? He does not move into attack. He sits back and waits. So when a quarterback does the play action fake, that middle linebacker is wise. He just sits back and he backs up, intercepts the pass. Never bit on the play action fake. So when the Holy Spirit is on you, you know when to attack, when to fall back. A rookie linebacker will do what? Bite on the play fake. So he goes in to make a tackle. Guess what? The pass goes right over his head every time. So that inexperienced, wet behind the ears linebacker needs to go have a seat. He can't read the quarterback like the brother just said. He doesn't recognize a pass from a running play. So he bites on the play action fake and the pass gets thrown over his head. So what does that represent? Prophecy. We have to be able to recognize what's real versus what's fake. Shalom, beloved. Brother GMS Spiritual War and the beloved lady of the hopeful elect 
Alma Yasharal, the Mighty Man, Brother Gabar Dunn, GMS Gabar Dunn, and the beloved Lady of the Lek, the beloved Lady of the Hopeful Elect, Amelia Tribe of Issachar. So getting back to that analogy, when we're full of wisdom or full of the Holy Spirit, we can recognize where we are on the battlefield. So what's my point? What are we seeing in these last days? Many people claiming to be King David. That's one of the hot topics. Shalom, beloved King, GMS, Saints of the Most High. So, what do the prophecies say? Once again, are we moving based on flesh, feelings, and emotions, or are we walking in the spirit of wisdom? So with this huge swarm of different men saying they're King David, prophecy should be going on. Remember, the experienced linebacker on the football field, behind the defensive line, waits, observes. He's not moving based on what he thinks or feels. He's moving on what? Experience. Somebody put the definition of experience on the comment board, please. What is the definition? of experience. So are you the rookie linebacker biting on the play action fake or the experienced linebacker? So the Bible says, let our speech be seasoned with salt, not moving on feelings, not being faked out, so to speak based on emotions, sensitivities. The Bible builds a seasoned recipe, develops, cultivates, and shapes a seasoned person. Thanks, King. Brother GMS, Saints of the Most High, experience practical contact with and observations of facts. Ooh, wait a minute. Let's read it again. So the rookie linebacker is going to bite on the play action fate. He's going to go to attack, thinking that it's a running play, that the running back is getting ready to run through the line of scrimmage. Not the experienced linebacker. The experienced linebacker is like a serpent waiting to attack at the perfect moment in time with precision, a precision strike. Let's read that again. Brother Bunyan Yasharala, Brother GMS Saints of the Most High, experience practical contact with an observation of facts or events. So the Holy Spirit gives us a eagle's eye, so to speak, keen eyesight to strike with precision, a master blow where you can't recover. See? Brother Adam Nana, Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 8. If a man desire much experience, she knoweth things of old, and conjectureth aright what is to come. She knoweth the subtleties of speeches and can expound dark sentences. She foreseeth signs and wonders and the events of seasons and times. 
So what do you get with an experienced linebacker? He can foresee the play-action fake. He knows when it's a pass. The ball is getting ready to get thrown over top. So he acts like he's going to go in to make a tackle. But what does he do? Fall back. He falls back and intercepts the football. So a coach dream is an experienced linebacker. He foreseeth the signs, all these different bug outs claiming to be King David. Experience tells us through the Holy Spirit what? No prophet will self-confess who he is. Somebody help me out with some scriptures. There is no remembrance of all of former things, Ecclesiastes. And also we need John 1, somewhere around verse 19 and 20. See that? So the Holy Spirit tells you when to attack, when to fall back. That's that experience. So there's a lot of people that are unstable. They don't know if they're going or coming. But with the spirit of discernment, it brings in what? Stability, peace of mind. Brother GMS saying to the Most High. So instead of getting all rattled, oh, there's another King David. There's, a, there's one over here in Chicago. There's one over here. There's one over there. The scriptures give us stability, peace of mind, knowing when to attack, when to fall back. Let's read this. Brother GMS saying to the Most High, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So no prophet truly knows his identity in the former life, in the days of old. The only prophet that knew who he was is who? King Solomon, which is Yahushua. Nobody is on the level of Yahushua. So let the bug outs do what they do. Bug out or get nervous in the last days. They lack stability like that experienced linebacker. He knows when the run is coming. He knows when it's a play action fake. He knows when it's a run up the middle. Brother Bleon Yasharal, John 1 and 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And this is John being questioned on who he is. Now the scriptures tell us what? He is John. He is prophet Elijah from the days of old. But the knowledge and wisdom of the scriptures also say there is no remembrance of former things. So don't bite the bait, the play fake. The Most High will send you strong delusion like these bug out King Davids. John 1 and 19. Brother Ariyah Ayal. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confess, I am not the Hamashiach. Now they also said, so what's the bottom line? There is no remembrance of former things. That's the wisdom and stability of the scriptures, understanding the prophecies, understanding reincarnation.
incarnation, which is a stumbling block to the carnal minded, to the secular world. So the ancient spirits are back. Now it is a Pandora's box, a slippery slope to start naming off who's who. But the prophecies don't lie. In the last days, the children of Israel will seek the Lord and their king, King David. So let the prophecies play out. There shall be many scoffers in the last days. Let the prophecies play out. And that experience causes us to sit back and enjoy the show. But to measure the times based on the Bible, the rod, the measuring stick, gauging the metrics of where we are in world events. So what is the metric system that we're evaluating based off of? The prophecies, the prophetic timeline of events. Many scoffers in the last days. So we know that we're close, searching and seeking King David. We know we are close. So when you go into that word, mockers and scoffers, it goes into what? Non-believers, unfaithful. So this is the time to get excited. We're in the times to really get hungry for the gold for the end game, for the reward. We should be able to sniff and smell the kingdom if we understand the prophetic metrics, the measuring stick. If I'm not making sense, please let me know. I won't get offended, I promise. I'll just feel like a bad teacher. Brother Bayan Yasharal, 2nd Ezra 9, verse 1. So the bug outs, the scoffers that are prophesied in the last days, that word scoff or mock is unbeliever, unfaithful. So what's my point? This is a time to be excited. Brother Boyan, Yasharala, 2nd Nephis 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. See? So we are seeing through the oracles, through a holy veil, this book. So we must have a measuring system, metrics. Many trying to claim to be King David. Many scoffers in the last days, searching the king. That's a key metric. What else? What is the big one? What is the big plumb line? or the target where the metric stick has a bold line. What is the big line in the sand? Somebody post it, please help me out. What is the big metric? Brother Bayan, Yasharala, 2nd Ezra 9, verse 1, verse 2. Then, then shall thou understand. Well, we gotta take our time. So when we're looking at a wall we don't know how long it is. We have no idea. But when we apply the understanding of the scriptures, it gives us tick marks, lines. And when you're navigating, they're called what? Waypoints. Waypoints. Metrics. 
lines in the sand. So when you're navigating, they're called waypoints. As a commander, I'm going to say, I'm looking for my waypoint to reach the objective. Let's keep going. So the big tick mark, no sound right to my ears. So what are the big tick marks? The mark of the beast, that man of sin being revealed. See, then shall thou well understand. So if we don't understand who the man of sin is, we're going to be confused. We don't know how to use the tools, the measuring stick. We don't understand the litmus test. Many claiming to be King David. Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Who is Esau Edom? Who is the serpent? The serpent persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Who is the man child? Who is the woman? So these are tick marks in our measuring tape. The measuring tape is the Bible. Why you think they're trying to ban the Bible? Call it hate speech. Make it illegal. Why you think we were given a slave Bible? Why you think the Bible destruction group took out the Apocrypha between 1620 and 1665. Take away the workman's measuring tape. Take away his ruler. He has no idea how to measure the times diligently. Let's go back to that. Brother Bayan Yasharala. We got to take our time. Brother Bayan Yasharala. Second address 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shall thou well understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Who's dwelling deep? Flee ye, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the dawn. Who's canceling major concerts coming up? The lesser illuminaries, the celebrities, the elites. Who's going underground? What is that a precursor or indicator for? The apocalypse, the nuclear holocaust. Then shall thou well understand who's being identified as that man of sin, the, mo the world's most wanted, that's going to flee and dwell deep, go into hiding after destroying the earth. Measure thou the times, then shall thou well understand. Brother Bayan Yasharala, second address nine, verse three. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, who's losing jobs because they won't drink the serpent's piss? Who's unemployed or resigning? An entire nerf nursing staff resigned in Minnesota. Over 10,000 nurses across 12 or 13 different hospitals. So who's uprising? The workforce, the labor class. Does not the scripture say the earth shall rise up against him? Who is that him? Who is the serpent, that man of sin? Second address 9, verse 4. 
Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. That's Luke 1 or 70. So the prophets are on the scene of the crime, telling you what's coming. That man of sin, who is the woman, the Lord's anointed, his chosen, who is the serpent, the international enterprise, the global elites, Edomites, the so-called white man. So these signs are a part of the tick marks, the measuring sticks, the lines in the sand, so to speak, or the Bayan Yasharala, Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. So there's a war right now between Azerbaijan, a former Soviet Union bloc nation, and Armenia. Is that not a part of the metrics? Wars, rumors of wars. China is making strategic military moves on Taiwan. Is that not a major thing to watch? They're surrounding the Taiwanese island with naval assets. The U.S. is moving a naval aircraft fleet to Far East Asia to preposture itself to strike China in defense of Taiwan. Japan is mustering its naval and air assets in preparation to defend its ally, Taiwan and America, distress of nations. So what does the experience I do? Prophesy, teach, preach with a peace of mind. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Who's threatening nuclear war? North Korea has publicly gone on record saying that they reserve the right to first strike with their nuclear arsenal. America is upgrading its nuclear missile arsenal with the new hypersonic and supersonic missiles that can hit Moscow in 30 minutes. And they're restructuring and retooling their air and missile Iron Dome defense system to protect U.S. coastal waters and the continental United States, measuring the times diligently. Brother Gabar Adama, Isaiah 33, verse 8. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So you don't fear the Lord in these last days. His name is Yahweh, the Father, and the Messiah, the Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. You're not going to make it. There is no spiritual hedge around us without that protective name, that barrier, without that sanctuary, our defense. The Lord is our defense. So everything starts in the spiritual realm first. Death, life. No spirit comes through the belly or the womb of Eve without a spiritual decree. No spirit leaves this outer shell, so-called death, without a spiritual decree and re-enters the fourth dimension, the third heaven, without a order, a decree from on high. So what is there to fear? Life and death is in the hand and power 
of him who gave it. So why are we worried about mockers, scoffers, wars, rumors of wars? Fear not, thou servant Jacob, and ye men of Israel, for I will help thee, saith the Lord. Fear not. If anything, get excited. Look up when these things shall come to pass and know that our salvation is drawing near. So the workman understanding his tool kit, his work set, understanding his measuring tape, his rod, his measuring stick, his plumb line, when he begins to see the metric of prophetic events fall together and come together piece by piece, line by line, measured out with precision, the master workman begins to get excited. We're here. Look up when thou seest the signs, the tokens, the metrics, are prophetic events. We know where we are along the wall of tribulation, among the wall of the field, which is the world. We know where we are in the labor pains, the birth pains, to being delivered. Brother Shapad the Twelve, Shalawan King, Rakatak, Shapad the Twelve, Jeremiah 50, verse 23. How is the hammer? Wait a minute. <laughs> a workman knows what? A workman knows his tools. What good is a tool set if you don't even know what a damn monkey wrench is? Bug out. Bug out. You become the monkey. If you don't know how to twist and turn and navigate through the tool set, the metrics are prophetic events. Let's read this again. That's the spirit. Brother Shabbat the 12, Jeremiah 50, verse 23. How was the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? So when the workman sees the hammer drop, it's the end is near. Why you think the judge drops the hammer? Case closed. It's time to move on. Case closed. Shut. The end is near. Who is the hammer of the earth? America. Economically fallen. Militarily fallen. The hammer is fallen. Citizens distrust in the daughter of Babylon. A citizen's arrest is coming from the men of the house of David. The tabernacle of David is being reconstructed, rebuilt, and the hammer is falling. The daughter of Babylon. So a workman knows the tools, studies, to show himself approved a workman that need not to be ashamed, but without knowledge of the metrics of the prophetic events of ancient wisdom, a workman is ashamed. He might as well put on an apron and start rolling bread dough with flour and mixing water and oil together with a bread roller, okay? That's what you become. For we become, without knowing our craft, without being craftsmen, workmen, without seeing the events, seeing things unfold. Freedom of speech is hate speech. Truth is misinformation, disinformation. So we see the events. So we understand where we are in these last days. Channels being taken down. Videos being taken down. 
Now truth, it's conspiracy theory. Now facts, it's hate speech. If I go sleep with another man's wife and another brother call me a dirty dog, is he spewing out hate or is he telling the truth? So we can play with words all day long. I am a dirty dog if I go lay with another man's wife. So the evil is being exhibited in these last days. The light is shining on the evil doers. Bill Kill Gates, Dr. Fraud G, or Dr. Fauci, False C. See? So now that's hate or conspiracy theory. Why are you taking down the videos if we're delusional and should be wearing a Wizard of Oz 10 man, 10 can pot turned upside up, upside down on our head? If we're bugged out, why are we getting so much attention? Why is there a governance social media task force that's being established? Measuring the times. Where are we? Where are we? Pull out your tool set. Pull out your measuring stick. Your measuring tape. Where are the prophetic metrics of events? Many claiming to be King David. Does not prophecy say? They so search for their king in the latter days. So that experience, the spirit of the ancient, Tell us to measure the times with what we see. Not get angry, but get excited. This is the time to be excited. There should be many scoffers and mockers in the last days. Oh, you're teaching hate. That's disinformation. That's misinformation. The Bible is a man-made book. It's a fairy tale book. There's a swarm of them now. The global elites have stood up a social media task force. 110,000 scoffers and mockers now that are taking down channels, deleting videos, deleting comments. 110,000 internet warriors with a so-called wrench, so to speak with an administrative wrench to take down our comments. Can we not see the magnitude of this construction event? The rebuilding of the Lord's temple. Can we not see it? Why would 110,000 internet social media warriors be stood up, commissioned to delete comments, to take down videos, to take down channels, to call us conspiracy theorists. Why is Dr. Fraud G stepping down? Why is Bill Kill Gates being silenced from speaking publicly? Why? So we're close, distress of nations, perplexity, uproars of the people. Azerbaijan invading Armenia, China invading Taiwan, Russia, Russia invading the Ukraine, the government demonizing its citizens. I think it was David Rockefeller that said the worst thing invented was the what? The internet was the worst thing ever invented. So they're losing control of the storyline. They can no longer control a story. How I many ever did something to your brother or sister? You would haul ass to get back into the house. He hit me first. He hit me upside the head. It was him. But you were that culprit. It was you. So they're losing their ability to run into the house across the mainstream and tell their storyline their story lie first. They're losing the edge on innovative technologies. <laughs> the internet, social media, 
See, social media or alternative news networks or outlets like YouTube has far exceeded expectations. Not many watch the mainstream anymore. CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. See, everything's on alternative news outlets now. See, social media. We want to hear from our peers. How many want to listen to what a, a billionaire has to say? We don't give a damn what a billionaire thinks. Go eat sand and fart dust, okay? So we're more interested in what our social peers have to say. Our net works, not what a millionaire or a billionaire has to say, or Bill Kill Gates, or Dr. Fraud Chief, okay? The world is changing. The world is rapidly changing. And many can feel it and see it. No time in history of the world where a poor man's voice. <clears throat> so what we're witnessing is revolutionary. A poor man's voice with a damn YouTube channel. This man only makes about 40,000 a year. His voice is being heard around the world. No time in history other than when the prophets were on the scene in the old days where the prophets' message began to circulate the Mediterranean, the so-called Middle East. You see? So we are reigniting the voices of the ancients. We're back. We're there again. We are revisiting historic events where a poor man's voice is being heard around the world. These videos are going out in Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, Farsi, Persian. I mean, come on. This is a monumental event. Monumental. So it's striking fear, concern, anxiety, across the global elites and their secret or hidden chambers. Brother Gabar Dama, Psalms 19 and 4. Their line is gone. See, this is an internet scripture. This is how powerful the Bible is. Psalms 19, verse 4. Their line is blown out through all the earth and their words and their what? And their words to the end of the world. And them have he set a tabernacle for the sun. So we're seeing a spiritual sanctuary being reconstructed. The Lord's temple, pure words of morality, Character, strength, wisdom is formulating across the outer firmament and in a land where we were told we are nothing. Now a multi-billion dollar global task force has been established. 110,000 internet and social media warriors attacking Free speech. The government has outsourced civilian contractors to circumvent the freedom of speech statute. Let's read this again. We got to take our time. We got to take our time. What lines? The internet. When you text, that is a what? A line. When you send a message. It goes across a circuit or line. Comments. Brother Gabar Dama, Psalms 19, verse 4. Their line is gone out through all the earth, 
and their words to the end of the world. In them have he set a tabernacle for the sun. So rays of light, wisdom, is emanating or radiating from this sanctuary. Psalms 19, verse 5, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. So this is a habitation for the Savior, Yahweh to sit on his throne. He's going to return a second time according to the prophetic scriptures. So we are measuring out a sanctuary, a tabernacle, a spiritual house by pure words of truth, making ready for the bridegroom. Who is there? Knowing our measuring tools, knowing our craft. Who is the bridegroom? Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, the Hamashiach, prophesied to return in the Old Testament. So we need these tools. We need the toolkit. We must be indoctrinated or initiated into this craft to become certified craftsmen. So we must be initiated through the gift of the Holy Spirit. If not, we're not going to be able to measure. We're not going to be able to read or decipher the metrics of the prophetic tick marks or so-called proverbial lines in the sand. We won't know we're at the end of this, this road. We won't know that things are getting ready to heat up. We're going to get, be afflicted, persecuted by a global order, by an international group of elites. We're not going to know that this is coming. Food shortages, a logistical bottleneck in supplies, water, food. We're not going to know that the train stations are getting ready to create a shortage, a narrow resupply and supply network, a constraint, a serpent squeezes its prey first. So when the Bible is talking about a serpent, it's talking about a global order. Look up the United Nations symbol. What do you see wrapped around the two olive branches. Woo! You see what? A serpent wrapped around two olive branches. Who are the olive branches? So we have to understand this craft. Brother Shabbat, the 12th, Sirach 13 and 23. When a rich man speaketh, every man hold his tongue and look what he saith. They extol it to the clouds. But if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. <coughs> so I'm glad you posted this. That's the spirit. When we look at our current predicament, when we look at the condition that we're in, we've been brainwashed to think that you must be smart to be a billionaire. You must be intellectually gifted to be a trillionaire. You must be better than I am. Many of our women are hypergamous. Somebody post the definition of hypergamous, please. So Eve had been deceived by the serpent. Serpent just means a proverbial snake in the grass. The adversaries of God, which starts with the 13 Illuminati, Illuminati families, the global elites, the international bankers. So most of our women look at us as shit. 
were nothing. You see, I grew up here and all my life, niggas ain't shit. You see, don't respect him. Leave if you're unhappy. You see, so we got destroyed homes, broken families through feminism and Edomite supremacy. So we've been deceived by the proverbial snake in the grass, which started with Eve. So this is heavy. So the kings are at the bottom right now. Did not Israel fall and get sacked or taken down by the ancient Roman Empire? So who are the people in the Holy Land? But we've been mind screwed, mind sodomized. In the military, we say mind F, and I'm not going to say it, to believe that wealth is intelligence, strength. Yeah, money is a defense, but the true kings and priests were knocked down. Brother Shapad the 12, Surat 13 and 23. When a rich man speaketh, every man hold his tongue and look. What he saith, they extol it to the clouds. But if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. Everybody and their mama come against you. Baby's kids, little snotty nose, rebellious toddler, or the damn diaper overflowing with poop and a bottle that he done knocked you upside the head with about 20,000 times. See, nobody respects masculine energy. That's toxic masculinity when you speak of the ancient kings and priests, when you speak of the house of David, the warrior class, when you speak of the great men, of the mighty men of King David. That's toxic. But yet a woman can abandon her kids, put them up on child support, I mean, um, adoption, murder that child, leave the family, and is looked upon as a woman in distress, a victim. How many times can you be the victim under feminism and white supremacy? When are you held accountable for abandoning the kids, for murdering the kids? You see, for putting them up for adoption, for leaving the house. But you'll have a wicked baboon wearing a blonde wig. That's right, girl. You go ahead and leave him. You ain't got to put up with that. Where is the accountability? Where do we draw the line in the sand? Come on now. Come on now. Let's go to this word, hypergamous. So the world is upside down. The wicked rulers of the ancient Roman Empire are back. That's what the Bible means, that beast that received a deadly wound but did live. The Rockefellers, they're back. The Vanderbilts, they're back. These are the ancient Roman vassals that are back. These same royal families go back to the ancient Roman Empire, the Visigoths and so forth. You see, they're back. They're all back in their life. That's that beast that received a deadly wound, but did live. The revised Roman Empire, the wicked. Thanks, Brother Adon Nana, for this hypergamy. So a lot of our Eves are hypergamous, looking to be promoted constantly. You'll go and sacrifice 30 years of your life. And when you're 55 years old, that corporation dismisses you like a used tampon and your families are destroyed. Your kids practically raise themselves. But yet you've elevated a multi-trillion dollar company or corporation at the expense of your home, Eve. Wake up. Let's read this again. Stop sacrificing your household, your family, your children, 
to help build a multi-trillion dollar corporate global enterprise that turn around and oppress us, poison us. Our mind, our bodies are poison. Hypergamy, the action of marrying or forming a sexual relationship with a person of a superior sociological or educational background. So you are exalting oppressors, rulers of the earth, corporate giants that built their wealth, that built their enterprise on plantation slavery. Look it up if you don't believe me. So you've sacrificed your soul, your families, to corporate giants that built their wealth on theft, robbery, deceit, mischief. It's not worth it. Our families are suffering. We are suffering. We've been beat down to our socks. Most of us got lead in our bloodstream, mercury. Many of us have all types of mental pollution from what we eat. We got lead in the water. Most of our brains are calcified with fluoride. Many of us have nervous issues, circulatory issues, psychological issues. Everybody on earth has a family member that had a nervous breakdown. So we're building a system that's deconstructing us, polluting our mind, our bodies. We're not relying on the ancient herbs, the ancient fruits and vegetables, the same food that healed our ancestors and they lived to be 80, 90 years old plus. We're dying earlier. We're sicker more often, living shorter lives and working harder to our own death. How much sense does that make? We're working overtime, triple time, and are living shorter, more miserable lives. But the time is now. The times are being measured out based on the rapid growth of this truth. The olive trees are flourishing and are beginning to produce massive fruit around the world. Fish got mercury in it, contaminated. Water in Flint, Michigan, Jackson, Mississippi, is coming out looking like Starbucks coffee. So why are we working harder, more miserable, shorter lives? That's counterintuitive. It goes against what's rational, against humanity. It makes no sense. But we've been programmed to trust a corrupt, wicked system led by the great pharmaceutical giants, the petroleum and oil giants, the war, <laughs> the war, steel, and iron manufacturing giants like Lockheed Martin, just to name a few, iron and silver and, and all the major jewel industries. Trillionaires run the world, not politicians. Your vote is no different from a high school electoral office vote back in high school when you voted for class president. It carries no weight. It's trash. Lobbyists drive politicians and politics. Pharmaceutical lobbyists, iron and silver, gold lobbyists, diamond lobbyists, pharmaceutical drug lobbyists, petroleum and oil lobbyists have the politicians in their back pockets. Or the GMS Spiritual Art 144. Isaiah 24, verse 4. 
The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The, ha the haughty people of the earth do languish. We are dying. We're overworked, underpaid, and sicker because of the corruption in politics, government, medical tyranny, medical malpractice, greed, power, control, global dominance by Romans, Edomites. Isaiah 24 and 4 again. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. So this kingdom is under decay. It's fallen. And the people are mourning. Verse 5. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. Universal laws of governance have been discarded. Masculinity, order, the man being a head, the woman being a caretaker, a nurturer, a supporter, a giver. You see? So we have deviated from our righteous trajectory. And now we are flopping in the wind under a wicked, corrupt system of international bankers. The herbs heal our ancestors. Fruits and vegetables, food is our medicine. Naturally, Isaiah 24, verse 6. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. So fire breaks witchcraft. When you look up the word pharmacy, or it goes back to what? Pharmakia which means witchcraft. So the entire earth is under a spell. So we got we to gotta take our time. Why is the earth going to be burned with fire? Because America is likened unto a witch. You see? The mistress of witchcraft. So the entire earth is under a spell. Pharmakia Pharmacy means witchcraft and the idols that have been erected all across the land. The entire district of Columbia is built on masonry, witchcraft, to keep the people enchanted, bugged out. Therefore, have the curse devoured the earth. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. So fire is going to cleanse the earth. A nuclear holocaust. What does holocaust mean? A burnt offering. So the Lord is going to sacrifice the wicked. Starting with the rebellious, wicked, two-third Israelites in America. Brother Shabbat the 12, Psalms 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So the two-thirds are going to fall and are going to be sacrificed. The slain of the Lord is filled with fat, the fatness of rams, the fatness of lambs, goats. The Most High is very poetic, but he does not have his hat turned backwards and looking like a damn flounder fish bugged out. The Most High is very poetic. 
So he's talking about the sword, the ICBM. The ancient prophets described it as a sword, a nuclear missile, intercontinental ballistic missile. So flesh is going to be devoured by this fire. That's why he says his sword is filled with fatness of flesh. So he's speaking poetically. The international bankers are going to go into slavery. They're going to be the first fruits of slavery. Why you think they made the 1968 movie Planet of the Apes? They're calling the up and coming kings and priests Planet of the Apes. The Bible says in 2nd Exodus chapter 6, verse 9, for Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So that movie, 1968, Planet of the Apes, is a spiritual movie. They're taunting us. They show up the apes beating the international bankers and putting them in chains and shackles. Slaves. So they make mockery of these prophecies. Brother Zadok, Brother Zadok, Shalom King. Let's get this one. Brother Gabar Dhamma, Sirach 10, verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man, for such as one setteth his own soul to sell, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. So many Israelites are sellouts. They sell out to the elite. They engage in sodomy, child blood sacrifice, drinking blood. Many celebrities have admitted to this. You can look this up on your own. Why are they compared to earth and ashes? From the dust we came to the dust we return. So they're going to be beat to powder. They're going to be destroyed by nuclear destruction. So the Most High is mocking the proud rulers of the earth. Why is earth and ashes proud? So you international bankers, you're just dust particles. You're just specks of dirt in the eyes of the Most High. We know you're watching. That's how our videos get taken down and strike. We're not apes like you mock us in the 1968 movie, Planet of the Apes. We got a power that's going to fight for us. So that movie that you made in mockery is going to become your worst nightmare. Hell on earth. So when the Bible says, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee. It's talking about you becoming slaves. It's not talking about you being cast down underground. Hell is going to be on earth when that nuclear fire creates a lake of fire. That's going to be hell. And the end result of that is the international bankers getting taken up in chains and shackles and put to work. I bet the international bankers got soft women hands. They haven't done a single hard days of work. Not one day. So your little baby hands are going to be put to work. It's coming. And the mighty men of King David, the sons of Jacob, are going to be your overseers. Masculine men, by the way. You're not going to be able to accuse us of toxic masculinity. You're going to be manhandled in that day. All right? No more slave patrol police little paddy wagons roaming around. How do you think they get the term paddy wagon? It goes back to the ancient slave patrols in the old world in the 16, 17, 1800s. So the new slave patrol is going to be the sons of Jacob. It's coming. So the global elites are scared. The Bible says great 
fear fell upon them that saw them. Saw who? They saw the tabernacle of David being raised up. The mighty men of the sons of Jacob prophesied to return in the last days and wake up. That's the valley of the dry bones. Why you think Malcolm X was assassinated shortly after what? That dry bone speech. The valley of the dry bones. You see? So the international bankers can understand the tokens, the signs. My comments was like, you are the valley of the dry bones. Dead to the knowledge of your heritage. Dead to the knowledge of your nationality. Dead to the knowledge of the true God. Dead to the knowledge of the truth. Right after that, they, they killed him. See? Well, the Bible is a weapon. It's not just a book. It is a weapon. I mean, you saw that movie, Book of Eli. Remember that actor said that? It's not just an effing book. It is a weapon, you imbecile. <laughs> Brother Shapad the Twelve, and we'll close out here. On the mighty men of the tabernacle of David, the ancient spirits from the days of old are back here on the scene of the crime. The crime scene is full of poisonous victims of the citizens of the world. The crime scene is full with the blood of the Native Americans. The crime scene is full of lies, poisonous doctrines, lead in the water, chemical trails being sprayed over us like we're a bunch of roaches. The crime scene is full of the fingerprints of the international bankers that wage illegal wars on Afghanistan to go after the heroin, the opium fields, and the opium fields of Vietnam, the Vietnam or Vietnamese conflict. The crime scene is filled with the Korean War. The crime scene is filled with the blood of the 67 bombing campaigns over Japan, killing off the Lord's people where we've been scattered throughout all the earth. The crime scene is filled with the illegal wars in the Middle East, Iran, Syria, making up a false narrative of weapons of mass destruction. The crime scene is filled with 911. And if I go into detail, of what happened September 11, 2001, they'll take down the damn video. So the criminal that's got bloody fingerprints is here. Esau Edom, that nigga, that red ninja, he's here. That slaughtered the natives, the indigenous people, indigenous people, the queen that passed away. All her jewels, gold, silver, can be traced back to the African continent, Far East Asia, India, the Middle East. Every single ounce of treasures in the gold vaults of the global elites can be traced back to stolen land and blood. Why well, you think they made the movie Blood Diamonds? You think that's just the name? No, it's literal. They have a European company a civilian contractor whose job is to fund going into the Ivory Coast and various other parts, waging little, what you call them? Proxy wars, goodness, proxy wars, hiring mercenaries to kill and steal blood diamonds. Look up that movie too. I watched that movie. So sometimes Fact is stranger than fiction. Let's close out here. The men of the Lord is on the scene of the crime. And the caveman got bloody fingerprints. And a smoking gun, a smoking revolver. Talking about what crimes? What crimes? What crimes? What crimes? Yeah, okay, whatever. 
close out here. The book of Psalms. Brother Shabbat the 12. <coughs> so a true man of the Lord and the remnant of the hopeful elect accepts accountability. One of my sayings is, I never get close to someone that lacks integrity. How can you build with someone without the glue of morality, without the glue of integrity, without the glue of spiritual wisdom? Can't do it. Anybody that lacks integrity, I don't even let them get close to me. There's the door. There's the door. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Without the, the, the glue being the integral building mortar, okay? Or, or building a temperate mortar. There is no building of a relationship. There is no building of a family structure without the spiritual glue of integrity, morality, wisdom. Without the spiritual wisdom, there's the door. And I have no problem telling you that. And it don't matter if you're male, female, or child. There's the door. So this is what's coming to the international bankers. The book of Psalms, chapter 149. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. That's this truth going out. So a dreadful sound is in, the, in his ears. That's what the Bible means by that. The global elites, this is a dreadful sound in their ears. The ancient spirits of the mighty men of the tabernacle of David and the sons of Jacob and the remnant of the hopeful elect are waking up worldwide. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. So this song is a beautiful melody. It's music to our ears, so to speak. How many have ever said something to your wife or your husband, and they say, there you go, singing that same old song. So the same old song is what we learned in these churches growing up. It's dead in the water. How many have ever seen a dead fish in a pond? Stagnant water. No life in it. It's not moving. It's stagnant. Many people around the world are walking dead. They have no wisdom. They're not flowing with fountains of life. They're barely breathing. Walking around with a proverbial oxygen mask on. They have no understanding. Trying talking to one is like speaking to a damn a, a, a puppet or a muppet. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meat with salvation. He will beautify the meat with salvation. So elect are being dressed with the fine precious stones of life. The elect are donning the white robes. The elect are decked out with exuberant light, wisdom. We gotta take our time. So the elect are being beautified with a glorious gospel, shining bright, so to speak. When somebody is shining with diamonds and precious jewels, we say what? The room lit up. When she walked in the room, the entire room lit up. 
Man, I'm getting hot. Let me change the story. <laughs> anyway, so the elect are shining with this glorious gospel. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meat with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. So the Lord is promising rest, peace of mind to his elect. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Rest, peace of mind, comfort, joy, stability. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. So the right hand is going to execute judgment and vengeance upon the wicked global elite. This is the house of David, the battle axe of the Lord. This lines up with what? Obadiah 1 and 21. Obadiah 1 and 21. See, the right hand can be just as fierce and abrasive as the left hand, but righteously. This is why he made the movie 1968, Planet of the Apes, showing the men of Israel, the sons of Jacob, with billy clubs in their hands. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Why, Lord? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. See? So the empire strikes back. Every movie they make, there's a spiritual relevance to it. Why you think they made the movie the Empire Strikes Back. What is the name of that movie producer? He's in the in, in, uh, in the in crowd, in the know. That man is a mason. Somebody please help me out. That uh, movie producer. He's also a little hat man, if I'm not mistaken. A little baby hat wearing Keebler Elf looking dude. George Lucas, thank you. Okay. He's in the in crowd, in the know. Thank you, a mason. What do you think they made the movie, The Empire Strikes Back? Yeah, not just George Lucas, but that, that's the name too. Steven Spielberg, thank you. See? So the Empire Strikes Back. What did the Bible say? And I will rebuild the tabernacle of David as in the days of old. See? So this is what we're reading about. The empire striking back. Without knowing this wisdom, you're just watching it with dry lips and ashy elbows and not being able to close your mouth with flies going in and out of your mouth looking bugged out. But now we can listen to this or watch or read these scriptures with a spiritual lens. Let's read it again. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What was those called in the movie Star Wars? They called them what? One was blue, one was red. Where they were fighting each other. Blue represents Jacob. The blue, uh, the blue ribbon with fringes around it. Red is what? I don't want. Eat them. See? You can't tell me. They don't know what the hell's going on. Come on, Sleazy E. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Sleazy E is something else. So, the wicked, the wicked had the red lifesaver. That's red. Eat them. Idawam in the Hebrew goes back to crimson or red, criminal. 
but blue represents Jacob, the house of David. Come on, sleazy E. You thought you had us, didn't you? See, I'm going to read it again. Those are the lifesavers. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Why, Lord? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. I thought the, everybody's going to be saved, including the house of Rothschilds, the house of Edom, the tabernacles of Edom. We're reading about their judgments. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. They're going to be slaves. The empire strikes back. The blue sabers, the blue life sabers are going to be victorious to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. So the tabernacle of David is being raised up. And I get an arousal just thinking about it. If you're a man and you hear these scriptures coming out, if you don't get some sort of an arousal, you're not really in the truth. You're just here. You're just here. That's it. Oxygen thief. Just breathing air. A total waste. A total waste. You ought to get an arousal thinking about vengeance on the global elites, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Vanderbilts, the Oppenheimers, the Gettys. Everything we've been taught is lies. Food, water, poison, pharmaceuticals are death sentences. The serpent's piss. If I say it, they'll take down the video. Our death sentences. Can't wait. I get overheated and aroused just thinking about it. And that's when you really know you're in the truth. You feel like you're just overheating in overdrive. If not, you're just here, taking up space and oxygen. These people have destroyed the entire planet Earth. The whole Earth is upside down. Feminism. Edomite supremacy. Okay? Not birth control, but birth destruction. Not Planned Parenthood, but family destruction. Planned destruction. That's what it is. But they use soft words. Flowery words to make it sound good. How can death be enshrouded in the term Planned Parenthood? Okay? Babies are being eliminated under that program. And 79% of these Planned Parenthood clinics are in Eve's neighborhoods. You got it! So-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. 79% are in your neighborhoods, Eve. But the serpent sounded good. I'm going to plan your parenthood. You got to be smoking a damn meth pipe laced with marijuana and opium. A damn meth pipe that's been super laced to believe this devil, this red ninja. Okay? That's why, Eve, it's time for you to fall back and let the real men stand up. Not beta male broke back sense. I did specify. I said men. Not you scared as estrogen watered down men that are scared. Sitting back eating a damn donut and drinking a hot mocha. Your ass got to go too. You're part of the problem. Okay, you estrogen based men. You have got to go. You got to go. Hopefully this lesson has been edified. Empire strikes back. The tabernacle of David is being raised up, risen out of the ashes, out of the valley of the dry bones, out from among the walking dead. 
And the Lord is having mercy upon Israel through a remnant elect that can see that are not zombies. Life is being breathed into the house of Jacob through the house of David. The Lord has raised up leaders that don't fear the carnal, that don't fear the flesh, that's picking up a man-made, handmade slingshot to take down the corporate giants, the corporate industries, the giants of the international global elites, the great red dragon, the serpent, is being taken out with lively stones shot from the hands of the poor man, Jacob, Lazarus. Lazarus means God help us. Pam Yasharaf, Pam Yasharaf, Pam Yasharaf, and Abad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Rakatam, Shalom. No man of the Lord, by the way, is coming out saying, I'm the king, or I'm Jeremiah, or I'm Ezekiel. Okay? That's the sign of a nigga. I'm going to just tell you straight up. You can get offended all you want. But who do you know that do that? I'm the man. I'm the man. That's what niggas do, okay? No man of the Lord is doing that. I'm King David. I'm the king. I'm the king. Okay, that, that's a sign of a black, grimy-ass ninja. I know it hurts. It hurts. If it's you, it hurts. When you're sick, you're the one that hurt. So strong medicine is needed for severe sickness. So if that's you, then you need a healing. And that's what this truth is for. I'm the king. I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the man. No, you're sick. You're bugged out of your damn brain. That's what you are. Okay? Shalom. I'm King David. No, you're not. You're the devil. You are the devil. I'm John the Baptist. No, you're not. That's not scriptural to do that. Unscriptural. Bug out. Rock of thumb. Shalom.